And welcome back to Sports on Tap. It's our Ohio High School football coverage preview show. We already covered the Greater Cleveland Conference with Josh Jeffy. So he did a great job uh, going through all those schools and uh, sure did some of the players. <laughs> um, but uh, now we're going to cover the Southwestern Conference, and uh, we're first going to start at the top with the Midview Middies. They were eleven and one last year, nine and zero in conference. They're led by head coach DJ Shaw. And uh, when you look at Midview's team, they lose four offensive starters on the O-line alone and their top three receivers. That including Logan Bolin, who uh, went on to play at Ashland, and running back Alec Forer, who had 10 touchdowns on the year. But they do bring back uh, Kent State commit Dustin Crum. He's back at quarterback this year. Uh, Midview's defense also returns three stars, including Jake Snyder. Now listen to this. He led the team in tackles with 143 tackles last year. That's a lot. Yeah, he's back, and I think he'll bring some experience, teach some of the other guys on that defense. But, uh, you know, Midview, it seems like they always uh, lose a lot of really, really good players. Uh, But DJ Shaw does a great job getting these guys back at it, and uh, we'll see what happens uh, with them, especially losing so many offensive players this year. I, st- I still think with the losses that you just mentioned, they're still the team to beat right now. Uh, Midview is just a is a powerhouse program. You know, it's built really well. They they do a really good job of not rebuilding but reloading that old cliche. So it's going to be interesting to watch the middies. I'm sure they're going to have a great season uh, that like they always have in the past few years. Yeah, and, you know, one thing that they uh... – have have always continued with is uh battling is the Avon Eagles who were 10 and 2 last year they were 8 and 1 in conference they're returning 11 starters five on the offensive side of the ball six on defense they're led by head coach Mike Elder and uh they have this year it's a little bit different they have an experienced uh, offensive line in secondary but at the offensive skilled positions uh are where they're pretty young um you look at uh, some of the players that are gone are Cincinnati-bound quarterback Jake Sopko, who had a great year and was an MVP almost every other week, it seemed like. He threw for 2,800 yards last year and 31 touchdowns. And then they lose uh, running back Garrett Choate, who uh, had 20 touchdowns on the year. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing with their offensive line, Northwestern-bound center Sam Garrick um, is on the offensive line, and uh, he's going to really look to be the veteran leader there along with Vito Sikora, Cameron Judge, Taylor Reynolds, and Will Kokar, um, who average about 260 pounds on that offensive line. You know, when you have a good offensive line protecting the quarterback and, and hopefully they can open some holes for the running game, you know, I think if you your quarterback doesn't have a ton of experience back there, you could be pretty safe still. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you look at uh, obviously the offensive line that's experienced but on defense they also returned six starters including Alec Damasowitz and Tommy Kokar in the secondary Mark Steinmetz and Xavier Holmes at linebacker and a judge again on uh, the Eagles three-man front so you look at uh, Avon they're going to have experience on both sides of the ball I think they're again going to be at the top uh, fighting Midview we'll see uh, you know Midview's losing a lot but uh, Avon experienced at different positions now can they have guys step up at the wide receiver position and quarterback position to make plays yeah that's good that's going to be the big question going into the season rob i think you're going to want to wonder what avon's going to look like offensively uh especially when they're trying to compete with the teams like midview and and other teams within that uh conference especially within the division as well well and uh we'll touch on uh, the berea mid park titans you know they were six and four last year five and four in conference they started off really well last year in the Southwestern Conference and had kind of a bumpy road. Um, you know, they lose a decent amount of players. You look at Nick Gassman um, and Joey Bocci, who went to Michigan State. Uh, Nick Gassman, um, I, I can't remember where he went to college, but he was the quarterback there and uh, led that team. And we talked to the new head coach, John Hunick, who's coming in. Um, coach Ray Raddick uh, retired at the end of the season. Now John Hunick steps in. He was the offensive uh, coordinator at uh, Maslin, Washington. We talked to him, and he went uh, through his players and just a really young team, but he's excited about almost every position there, and he thinks right away that th- these guys are going to really compete um, in the Southwestern Conference, and one guy to uh, watch is running back Tyrese Allen, who 
last year was really impressive. Uh, I know he was uh, behind Sean Epps, who had a great year. But Holland showed flashes that he could be a really big player in the Southwestern Conference. Yeah, and, and when we talk to Coach Hunick, uh, we'll actually be seeing them uh, week three. We're going to be heading out there as they take on North Ridgeville. But, you know, he it was talking to me. He does have some pieces he can build on. Uh, new team, uh, young team. Uh, I'm really see, interested to see how he establishes his culture. He's a first-time head coach, but he's been around some really great programs. He knows how to build a program, especially on the off offensive side of the ball. So I'm I'm really interested to see how that goes into um, this coming season for him. I yeah. I personally think you know as much as Coach Hunick was great on the radio and was great talking about how he's excited for the year, I think he also realizes he's got a challenge ahead of him. You know this this football team you know has been through some some change, whether it's combining schools, whether it's you know learning new personnel. Now they're switching basically uh, coaching philosophies. You know, uh, I'm sorry, what was the co name of the coach that was there? Ray Raddick. Ray Raddick was there obviously for a long time. You know, retires and now it's a whole new scheme. I mean, that I, you know, I'm sure by the you know the first the first couple games are going to be rocky. You know what I mean? It's going to be tough for the, that channel. That that transition is going to show itself. I have confidence in Coach Hunick that he'll get everything squared away, and by the end of the year, this team will probably be in some serious competition for you know, uh, playoff spots, uh, and even maybe even a, a conference title. Yeah, you know, I didn't tell you um, who some of these guys start off with. Strongfield travels to Avon, which Josh already mentioned. Um, and you look at Berea Mid Park, they travel to Bedford, which is going to be um, a really tough game. Lorraine travels to Midview. Um, so that's going to be a good game. Yeah, so Midview, be good, a good games, game. uh, you know, to start it off. Um, now let's go to the Olmstead Falls Bulldogs, who ended six and five last year, and they lost all but four starters last year. But they do bring back one key guy who was our MVP on more than one occasion. He is fullback Spencer Linville, who rushed for one thousand four hundred and seventy-three yards and sixteen touchdowns. And they do bring back senior offensive lineman and defensive lineman Sam Voss. But he will uh, be there for Olmstead Falls. But, you know, I'm interested to see what this team can do if other uh, players can step up for them because they are losing quite a bit of players off their team. Um, let's move to the North Ridgeville Rangers. They were 7-4 and four last year, 7-3 and three in conference. They return five offensive players and six defensive players. Their head coach is Luke Durbin. And uh, one player we know is going to be gone, and that's Demario McCall, who is now at Ohio State. Uh, but there are some players that are going to try to and, fill that role. And they're opening up a new stadium That's right, yeah. as well. So that will bring an influx of excitement into that program. And North Ridgeville won't be the only Southwestern Conference team playing at that stadium this year. Really? As North Olmstead, is, uh, their field's under construction. They'll be playing um, a few games at North Ridgeville Stadium and also in Avon. So uh, wow. we'll talk about that coming up here. But uh, Shamari Williams is a junior at North Ridgeville, and sophomore Cade Riley um, are looking to fill the role at running back this year. And Shamari Williams is a power back, has more moves um, than Cade Riley, but Cade Riley is a back that can cut and run. So both are a little bit different. We'll see if uh, Luke Durbin's going to run a two running back system. If uh, you know, kind of like the Browns, you know, you yeah. have a few different styles of runners running there. Uh, the offense will go will with three year starter quarterback Colin Sollinger. He is back, and he was a big time player last year who stepped in. Remember, Demario McCall was injured for about five games last year. Yeah. So uh, he stepped in. He not only can run the ball but can throw. And the defense has uh, more experience, led by a pair of juniors and linebacker, Jameer Malone and defensive end Tyler. And I'm going to butcher this because it's spelled S-Y-C-Z. So sick. Sizz. Sizz, sick, something like that. Size. Um, so That's call so, on the show and, and let me know how you say that. S-Y-C-Z. Oh, I have no idea. So hopefully they let me know how. To pronounce that. You know, Rob, it's interesting you mentioned the loss of Demario McCall and the fact that he was injured for a good portion of last year. I think that provided a pretty good idea of what life was going to be like without Demario McCall this year. Um, and I think it allowed those two running backs you mentioned to get some playing time and get some experience at the, at the varsity level so that when they take over this year, 
it's not such a drastic drop off. They're they're used to the speed of the game. They're used to the responsibility of being the running back. They're also used to the offense and how and how quarterback Colin Sullinger, who I think is going to be a very 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 good player for North Ridgeville. I think he's probably going to be one of the conference, probably an all first team all conference in that in that wow. you know no I, pressure. Well, I just you look at that. I mean, he's a three year starter, and he's been. I mean, obviously, he's good. He's the starter for a reason on a team yeah. that you know is is on the on the up and come, and that's and that's definitely something to point to. You know, when you look at MVP last year, it was that you know any time McCall got the ball, everybody looked. But we were at the North Olmstead game, and Colin Sollinger was just as was just as impressive, if not more. Than Demario McCall was for the limited time he was on the field. I mean, he was he was making plays with his legs, his arm. He understood how to read defenses. He was checking off. He did a very good job, and I'm sure Coach Durbin understands that you got to utilize a player like that. And he and he could be as he goes, that team's going to go. So yeah, it's going to be uh, interesting to see what he can do, whether it's passing or uh, running the ball. That offensive line is going to need to protect for him and the running backs. Now the Avon Lake Shoreman, they ended up four and six, four and five in conference. They return 11 starters, six on offense and five on defense, and their head coach is Dave DeLugas, who, you know, retired at one point because Larry Laird was taking over. Then all of a sudden he's back in the thick of things after, I mean, he's been there almost probably 25 years. Um, and, and this team is looking to uh, recover. Avon Lake's been down a few years. A lot of seniors on this team who look to get back uh, the Shoreman football way as senior Mark Pappas takes over at quarterback for the Shoreman. In addition to wide receiver Carson Toy, Hunter Bateman is another skilled wide receiver there. They have depth on uh, both lines, but it doesn't go too far past the starters, so we're going to have to see how you know the depth is for them there. Um, hopefully players won't go down to uh, injury, uh, but we'll see how tough uh, – It'll be for them because right off the bat, they play Elyria and Avon in their first two games, and I think that's going to be a marker to see where they're going to be at in their first few games. Uh, moving on to uh, the Westlake Demons, they were 3-7, and 3-6. and six. Uh, Jason Hall is their head coach in his second year, and he came from uh, Maslin, Washington, uh, where he coached for a while. And uh, we remember last year the Westlake Demons – Jawan Hardy, the running back, was a huge part of their team. Um, he is gone, along with uh, a few other players there. Uh, when you look at a Westlake team that you know had an up and down season, but they did have big playmakers at some of their wide receiver positions. So we'll see how they're going to recover this year and who they're going to bring in and who's going to fill some of those roles. Because I'll tell you what, that offense really put up a lot of points, but the defense struggled a little bit. Now the Lakewood Rangers, they were one and nine, one and eight la last season. Mike Rebar is their head coach, and they were led last year by quarterback Jack Weetry, who was a big part of that Lakewood offense. They also had Michael Goolsby, who was uh, a running back there at Lakewood, rushed uh, and, and was a leader on that team. Lakewood's, you know, they had their one win against Amherst. What can they do to uh, rebound and bring back some of the seniors? Um, they might have a long season, especially in a Southwestern conference that's just stacked from almost top to bottom. It's a very competitive conference. So we'll see what the Lakewood Rangers can do if uh, they can pull out some wins and play some hard uh, football. Now, the Amherst Comets, Comets last year were 0-10. Bill Fishley was their head coach. Now, he took a little bit in the offseason and made some pretty big changes there as he changed uh, their offense and coaching staff, as he brought in some former Oberlin College coaches, um, especially the Oberlin College former coach, uh, Pete Peterson, as he brought him on board as his offensive co coordinator. And Peterson is one of three Amherst coaches with 30-plus years of coaching experience. They also get an Elyria Catholic transfer and senior running back Jeremy Smith. They have senior quarterback Johnny Matikovich. And 26 seniors on this team, they hope to return and turn this thing around because Amherst football, the Comets were really successful under Coach Fell, who's now at Elyria. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have to see what they can do. Obviously, there's the only way to go is, is, up, is, is up. up there. You know, is up, and they're 10. bringing back a lot of experience, yeah. and I think that's only going to help them. And, you know, one thing about this conference is there's one non-conference game, and then you're getting yeah, right into it. So. um you know, it may be it may be even more difficult of a challenge for them to uh, improve on uh, their record this year because they're going right into 
um, conference play. It's not like, you know, in the Greater Cuban Conference where you got three non-conference games. And if you wanted to uh, schedule some lesser talent there to help you get off the off to a good start. But uh, in this case, for the Southwestern Conference, you cannot do that at all. Yeah, and you know, you never know what can happen, though. You know, North Ridgeville and Olmstead Falls, and some of those teams are losing some key players. So yep. you just don't know until you play the games. Amherst Steel will travel to Kenston as uh, they travel there, and Westlake will travel to East Lake North. Avon Lake travels to Elyria, and North Ridgeville travels to North Royalton. Now coming up is North Olmstead. They're our last team here, 5-5, five 4-5 five, five last season. They returned 10 starters, five on offense, five on defense. Coach Tim Bredeger um, is their head coach, and a new stadium is being built, like I said. So they'll have two games at Avon Middle School, three in North Ridgeville's new stadium. The offense, and we've heard this name many times, runs through senior tailback Josh Huffstetler. He comes back, and he was an all-Southwestern Conference uh, player last season and has been named team captain this year. He'll also play wide receiver and defensive back. The three other captains are inside linebacker slash fullbacker or fullback, Chandler Johnson and defensive lineman Omar Redwan and offensive and defensive lineman Zach Desperado. Um, other players expected to contribute are sophomore running back Darren Andrews, senior linebacker Ala Ahmed, and junior wide receiver Sean Conroy. Um, they have a lot of... Uh, other players there that um, are going to be pretty big for this team. But uh, you look at Chris Jones, he's a top newcomer and going to be a senior running back who transferred from Lutheran West. He was a third-team All-Ohio and first-team All-District in Division Five last year, um, setting our school record with more than 1,700 yards rushing. He now is a North Olmstead Eagle. I think that could really help North Olmstead. Um, Josh Hofstetler made all kinds of plays on uh, – in every area on offense. So he's going to be a key uh, part of the game there. Sad and thing is for that team is that they're going to basically having 10 road games this year. Yeah, and you, you know, know what? Their coach just... said it, it, they're almost getting used to that. They're just lucky that, uh, you know, they have some nice places to play and it's not yeah. far away. Yeah, but I still, you, I mean, when you're playing at North Ridgeville Stadium, it's not your stadium. It's not in your hometown. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not that yeah. far away. It's, you know, it's a it's 10-minute drive, whatever. But still, you're not you're still having to get on a bus and go there. You're still, that's still the traveling portion of it. You're not in your home locker room. You can't, you know what I mean? There's that. Yeah. Trip. So it's going to be, that's going to be an interesting storyline. I think in, in your conference is how North Olmstead responds to that particular set of circumstances. Now, would it be weird if they won conference at North Ridgeville stadium? Against North Ridgeville, that'd be yeah. fantastic. Be a great storyline. They play and, Valley. And they're Ford. the home team. <laughs> yeah. Valley Forge travels to North Olmstead uh, there, and Parma at Olmstead Falls, and Medina travels to Lakewood. That's the Southwestern Conference. We're going to step away, take a short break, because I'm pretty much out of gas right now. <laughs> After uh, talking about the Southwestern Conference, it's going to be an exciting year. When we come back, it's the Suburban League. What? What? And Sean Duffy. And Ed Dick. And Ed Dick. Via phone. The National and American Conference of the Suburban League. Coming up, we're Sports on Tap, part of the NAO Sports Insiders Network. It's our Ohio High School football coverage. We're coming right back. <laughs> 